G'day guys, uh, welcome to the uh, to the quick uh, tutorial on um, hopefully quick <laughs> tutorial on uh, making the um, CR6 Max into uh, turning the CR6 Max into a direct drive. Now I know that there's a million diff different extruders out there, and if you're probably going to go to this effort, then why bother with an old Creality uh, or metal extruder and all that sort of stuff? <clears throat> totally understand look if, if this isn't for you it's not for you but uh, for me guys I just wanted to utilize the same parts I always upgrade my printers to these all metal hot ends uh, all metal um, extruders and uh, I just wanted to be able to put it across I um, got bored today uh, been isolating been a bit crook and um, thought I'd do it so um, anyway so this is the part this one's not the most cleanest uh, print I've ever had in my off my printers but um, I've got this uh, stuff so that it's, it's trying to be a little bit more rigid for us all and um, look it seems to do the job uh, this is like the seventh iteration I've, uh, I've had others where it's just been flat with no backing and stuff like that and then um, just the outside and I just found it was a little bit too flexible so this one seems to be seems to be on point the uh, the spacer here is basically just to space the, uh, the extruder so that it um, is in line with the uh, with the actual hot end and the the mount itself. Um, so so that's the only reason for that. So if you don't put that in there, you'll have a two millimeter little bend in it. So it's up to you. But uh, I, I put it in there. <coughs> Excuse me. COVID. Ooh, gee, man. Uh, righto. So so to put this thing together, basically start with the two screws. These are these are the two top wheels. Um, these are a little bit tight. You've got to basically really screw them through. Uh, I did this on purpose. Um, the first couple of times, I actually made the holes big enough just to push them through. And I just find they're easier to um, to install onto the actual printer if these are held in place um, because you can't really get to the bottom one um, to put it on last easily. So I find what I do is I put the bottom one on first and tighten it all up and, and back it off with the eccentric nut it's eccentric man um, and then I just have these two little uh, screws screwed in nice and tight and uh, then I have the spaces on them and then when I put it on the machine I literally push these on and push the wheels on whilst it's sitting on the actual aluminium extrusion on the uh, X um, axis gantry or whatever you want to call it uh, and that just seems to be a lot better and then you can tighten the wheels up at the back and these don't seem to move so so that's always a bonus it just makes it a bit easier um, you could print this out of PLA if you really wanted to or PLA plus um, I'm sure it would work um, the hot end doesn't touch the plastic at all um, the only reason why I went with PETG for mine um, and, and I'm actually considering PETG fiber um, but look this is this is solid enough it seems to be okay uh, but the reason why I went with PETG on this one is because the uh, the motors tend to get a little bit warm on the back of the CR6 Max and um, when that happens uh, I'm just a bit concerned that it's going to warp a little bit so so I uh, I printed it with PETG because that's that's the best I can print with right now. I've got a couple of rolls of nylon and uh, PC and stuff like that, but um, I can't actually. Does that fit? No, it doesn't. Um, you know, I've got nylon and stuff like that that um, I can use, but I just don't have the enclosure or anything just yet. So, working on that bit. When you tighten these up, don't go too crazy. Um, this one's fine. You can go reasonably tight on this one, but um, just uh, don't forget that this is this is plastic and it is 3D printed. If you go super tight on something that doesn't have like a good fat wash on it, <coughs> excuse me, it will uh, will sink into the plastic and will eventually pull the layering apart. And yeah, just be a, a pain in the bum on you. So uh, so don't go super tight. Uh, you can go super tight on the extruder though, which is always handy when you mount this this. Uh, motor in the back, mount it with the little um, plug upwards, upwards, uh, facing up, so that um, it doesn't smash into the, uh, so that it doesn't smash into the actual um, gantry uh, or the arms, whatever you want to call them, uh, when they're going through there, because uh, that's what I had it the first time, 
and um, yeah, I've got I've got a spacer here. This this is the little knob that um, that hits the uh, hits the uh, x axis end stop, um, and it's it's pretty tight because um, this this modification does actually shrink your uh, bed size by about 20 mil, 30 mil if you want to be safe, um, and that's because of this big boy hanging out the side, hanging out the back, and um, <clears throat> the the original doesn't have anything hanging out the back, so it actually it passes the the left side of the the frame. Um, <coughs> excuse me for the z-axis, and uh, doesn't have anything to hit, so I can go all the way to the z-stop and just be flush. Doesn't need this little tab here, so um, so you lose you lose this much technically, but I think this is also a little bit wider maybe. So um, I did do it to the same size, but anyway, so you'll have to reconfigure your firmware um, and and just take take it from, because it's the CR6 Max, take it from 400, take it down to 270, uh, 370, sorry, or, um, or 380. Uh, just depends on your clearances. Just test it before you, you do it, because um, obviously they're going to be a little bit different sometimes and all that sort of junk. I think I've got mine set to 370 at the moment, but I think I can go up to 380 so that you only lose um, 20 mil, which is not that bad. I mean, come on, 20 mil. If you're absolutely lacking 20 mil, you can probably go back to another. I don't know about you, but I have I have tons of these carriages sitting at home. They're 25 bucks a, a piece from AliExpress, and um, easy to get a hold of. I've got a whole heap in the drawer over here, so. So I guess if you really wanted that 400, then this is not the mod for you, or or you can make it this is the mod for you, and um, just swap back and forth. But for me, I've got a CR, CR5 Plus, um, CR, CR, and a 5 Plus, and uh, a couple of uh, triplets of the CR6 SE, so <coughs> not too worried there. I got sick of the stringing that was being caused by... This thing having, um, you know, long Bowden tube, plus um, uh, I was having uh, extruding issues with um, my stuff as well. I found that if the as soon as the um, filament got uh, kinked or bent in any way, or just you know, was just a pain, um, it just played up. I might just fix that up a little bit. Yeah, just rip it out by the wire, Shane. That's always a good way to do it. Good on your mate. Spanker. Righto. Get that in there. Righto. There we go. Now, you can pull this all the way apart if you absolutely must. Uh, I just, this is like I said, this is the seventh iteration, so I've pulled this thing apart seven times now. Uh, and so I've just been leaving the wires plugged in. Um, I guess you do so at your own risk. Is that the right? No, that's not the right cable. Uh, not the right screws. These are the right screws. So with this, um, you will need to find some slightly longer screws. Um, these are not the original screws for this part of it, but they are some of the original screws. So some of the longer ones you can reuse to, um, to uh, mount some parts, and then others you've got to... Um, what am I doing here? There we go. Um, yeah, others you've got to just replace altogether. So. So there you go. It's uh, it's it's nothing hard. It's just the clearances. You just got to. It's slightly thicker than the original aluminium plate that's on here. So, so um, yeah, just just adjust as you go. If you're tinkering with this, I'm surely you, it's teaching you to suck eggs, teaching you what length screws and stuff you need. I mean, come on. It's different for everyone anyway. All right, so. Get these nipped up. Don't go too tight on these ones. Um, this is the circuit board. You don't want to be too tight on the circuit board at all. You want it held in place, but you don't want it super duper tight because you'll end up splitting that bad boy right down the guts. Okay. Now the extruder. It's all pretty tight. With these, um, I just added three washers on this front bit here because I don't have a screw the right length. Um, the clearance is behind the plate. 
between the plate and the the back of the plate I should say and the aluminium extrusion the the X gantry um, it's really really tight in there so oh shit got to plug in this this is just Capricorn PTFE tube um, just cut it so it's long enough just to fit in there just like that if you got a little bit of it off here it doesn't matter but make sure this is all the way in so you can see I had it plugged into the hot end down here this is obviously it's got to be in there nice and snug uh, otherwise you start getting jams so it's so always sacrifice this end for the other end now this bits quite tight um, oh, let's go on in it's just this print this print wasn't the most um, perfect print unfortunately for this plate but it will do. I was expecting that to be a little bit tight over there, just where the, the edge meets the, the washer there, but it's good enough. Good enough, Shane. That'll do, Pig. That'll do. It's a little bit fiddly, but if you get this done once, you shouldn't hopefully need shouldn't need to do it again. That's the cool part about using someone else's model isn't it you don't have to mess around with it the 70 million times to get it right um, hopefully this <coughs> excuse me hopefully this does you well Ooh, righto so that's in that's in it's all looking pretty good now this is the fan housing now i know that there's other better fans that you could probably 3d print and all that sort of stuff i just can't be bothered um you know, if you want to, then by all means, you know, hit me up, let me know, because I'd be keen as mustard to, to try one as well. I just can't be bothered modelling the plate to suit whatever it is, because I'm I'm lazy and I'm sick today, so it's so not interesting. Plug this down here. Run that through there. this back on. I was just trying to keep this as stock and as easy as possible uh, to be honest with you. Um, just that was a, a nice easy thing you could do one weekend if you really wanted to. Um, to be honest it took I think five hours to print, six hours to print the plates and then um, once that's done the assembly is what 20 minutes however long this video is. So you could probably do it in a day or half a day or something set the printer up overnight if you're that way inclined let it print and then um, come in the next day when it's all printed and, and build it so that's pretty cool I don't know about you but printing at night I, I do it um, you got to be pretty comfortable pretty confident um, in your printer but um, I guess if you've got smoke alarms and stuff you're pretty good but uh, I've never had an issue, to be honest with you. So, but it's it's pretty cool waking up and you got a whole part on the bed. That's pretty cool. All right, nip this up. Like I said, don't be too super super tight, um, but just enough so it doesn't rattle through. I guess if you really wanted to, you could use Loctite in this um, or CA glue. I sometimes use <laughs> in its place. That's pretty cool. So that's it. Make sure it all works. Uh, we'll go over to the printer and we'll plug it all in, hey? Okay, so we've got the printer. This is where you've probably taken it apart and left it hanging. Um, and these are the top wheels and obviously the belt. Uh, now the belt, um, these, are, these two uh, prongs, these two holders, are a little bit wider than the original so I had to just whack a little bit of a zip tie on there it doesn't have to be too tight just needs to hold it <coughs> this is the reason why these are slightly smaller because um, they're held easily like that plug them in run them on and uh, basically what I do is I line up the bottom I'm getting all twisted over here line up the bottom and uh, and then slide these on as you get them lined up just push it and pull it a little bit make it happy there we go so now and you can see why that's a lot easier because you can't get in behind these so so we'll uh, tighten up these like others make sure it's nice and snug 
Uh, now the backs of these are an 8mm, oh there we go, little 8mm socket. I've just got a little baby socket set that I utilise on this in my print room. Now remember don't go too tight but go tight enough so that it's nice and snug. And then of course you'll have to raise the gantry a little bit. I always pull it off when it's down low. I don't know what my problem is. Okay, so they're on there. But as you can see, it still wobbles because I haven't tightened up the eccentric nut down the bottom there. And we'll just raise this bed a little bit. So I can get under it. You'll have to level the bed after this anyway, so don't stress too much about uh, knocking it out of whack or anything like that. If you had it set perfectly prior to this, the second you took this thing off the uh, was the same second that you, you ruined your bed levelling anyway. So let's... Uh, find that little nut and we'll just twist it so that it's not too tight oh, out you come now but uh, tight enough to hold it nice and steady ah, these are always a looks good now obviously this is a fair bit heavier than what the uh, x-axis and the extruder and everything was before and uh, you will have to print a lot slower. I print at 30 millimeters a second. I've always only ever printed at 50 on this thing, but I've slowed it down even more. Um, but look, if you're if you're worried about your speed, um, then this is not the mod for you. And and to be honest, neither is this printer. Uh, go get yourself a Voron. You know, like this is not a this is not a speed demon printer. Um, have I got that on the right way? Yes, I do. Uh, plug him in. There we go. Plug him in plug the back in. Now this is a cable off my uh, CR5, uh, CR5 Ender 5. Uh, it's just a longer version. Um, you could always just cut the little baby cable that's over the side here and extend it. I literally just pulled it through this and then I have a little um, a little uh, pass zip line thing that I use to pull this out of the way. And I'll leave lots of slack in here because when this moves it moves and um, the less movement you've got in the back here, the better. In fact, you could probably, um, I could probably print an extra little snip there to have a zip tie in there so it stops it. That's probably a better idea. I'll get to that. But um, this will do for now. Um, okay, so I usually start with this side to put these uh, little lugs on onto the 2GT belt. If I can get it threaded through there, oh, I'm way too far back. There we go. Push him on. Same with this one. And then that should be it. Nip it up over here. Make sure you got this aligned nicely. Don't want that too tight. Just make sure you got no wobbles in there. Got a little bit of movement in that, but it's just the just the plastic, the sheet metal moving. Uh, might be a little too tight. That's it. Switch him on. Go through the uh, the bed leveling process. Do some test prints. <coughs> if you had this one in before, it shouldn't have changed with your e steps. Uh, but you, you can calibrate it anyway, but I've found it's exactly the same, so there's no need to do that. Um, go through, make sure it moves, all that sort of stuff, and you should be good to go. Hope this, uh, hope this works well for you gents and, and ladies. Um, hopefully it's, it's pretty good. If not, hey, you know, it's not for you, then, you know, no worries. I, I appreciate you stopping by anyway. <laughs>